We keep hearing overall, it looks like we're flattening the curve, but we're still seeing new cases. Yeah, joining us live this hour 18 is Dr. Vala Hoda, an infectious disease specialist and chief analytics officer at Rush University Medical Center. Doctor, you know, a big part of flattening the curve is the doubling rate. It's kind of confusing a bit to a lay person when we talk about flattening and a doubling rate. Can you explain a bit how this happens, what we're seeing and what it portends? Absolutely. Um, yeah, the doubling rate is really the time it takes for the count of new cases to double. It's that simple. And since the state is releasing, you know, pretty transparently each day the number of new cases, really it's as straightforward as looking at the number of new cases and how long has it been since it's um, since it doubled the prior counts. Um, when early in the epidemic, what we were seeing is that every two days we would see a doubling of the counts. And in New York, for really several weeks, we saw a doubling of cases. Uh, as the numbers get bigger and bigger, uh, the doubling really makes the number of cases grow exponentially. What's been really good about Illinois that we've been seeing is that the number of, the number of days for doubling has, con has been going up. And really every couple days that, that number of days increases. So as an example, about two weeks ago, um, it was about every two days we'd see a doubling. About a week ago, it was about every four days. Now we're up to about every 11 days we double. Um, as it goes higher and higher, what, we'll, what we are starting to see is that we're seeing potentially a peak in the number of cases, and we might eventually start to see a decline. Hmm. Doctor, there is speculation that the stay-at-home order could be lifted as soon as May 1st. What are the models showing? If this happens, will we see a round two? So that's the concern uh, I think that um, experts have uh, is what do we do next? So we, let's say we have a peak and we start to have a reduction in cases. How do we contain it? How do we continue to see a low number of cases? And uh, um, you know, if you wanted to look around the world, Singapore had a big reduction in cases and then lifted their stay at home and then they ended up having a new outbreak. And the doubling time, rather than growing longer, it actually became shorter again. It went from 60 days down to under 10 days. Um, and that means that there's more cases. So what we really have to be thinking about is how do we apply testing more broadly? How do we look to see if people are immune? Um, and how do we uh, really understand what's happening very precisely so if we do need to reinstate some sort of work from home policies, we can do it. You study clusters, doctor, uh, in particular in the Chicago area or the suburbs. Uh, when you, we talk about reopening things, and we know some places are hot spots, some places are hotter than others. Um, do you say maybe you shouldn't just reopen the state in general and, you know, the hot particular spots shouldn't reopen? Yeah, I think that um, we can be really helped the more that we know what is going on in our communities. Um, and the way to get there is with more broad testing. Uh, there are different models about how you can uh, reopen the economy or re, uh, re-allow people to go back to work and, and not shelter at home. The biggest thing is, is what's happening, uh, how fast is the, is the virus spreading? And if we need to, you know, there may be a need in, in particular communities to go back to a shelter and home temporarily to reduce um, the number of cases. So it's that transmission rate um, and how many new cases you have from every individual case. So doctor, with all your expertise, we wanna give you a moment to tell a message to those who are getting impatient here. They hear the good news and think it's safe to go outside or stop social distancing. So what would you say to really hit home to them how important this is? Oh, uh, well, I just wanna compliment everybody on the one hand and that I feel like as a state, um, we have really done a good job about trying to isolate and we are starting to see the impacts of that. Um, we wouldn't want to lose those gains. We wouldn't want to have a situation where we're starting to see rapid spread again. And so it does come back to basics, washing our hands, uh, trying to stay six feet away from others, um, trying to follow the public health recommendations, uh, and then be patient uh, because we need an orderly way to reinstate 
um, and go back to the way things were, but we won't go back fully, fully back to the way things were until we have a vaccine. And um, so we need to find some intermediate steps. Okay, Dr. Hoda, thank you for your insight. Thank you for your work and for joining us on Hour 18 tonight. Thank you.